I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hi, everyone. It's Francis, as always, and I'm with my friend, Julio. Hey, G. Hey, guys. What's up, dude? Wow. Good. Good. What a fun time. Uh, sure is. We are joined today by the intrepid, the uncomparable, Graham K. Is that how you start at every episode? It's always different. Just sort of make them make the audience unsure whether you're having a good time? <laughs> something about this guy i just every time i want everything he says makes me laugh uh graham is a a fantastic comedian uh he recently had a a great set on colbert which you can check out uh and uh graham how are you man what's going on i'm okay um thanks sorry i'm I'm learning how to the the mic was too far away no it's fine everything's fine graham also through my comedy experience (laughs) That was my answer. Of how no, I'm because doing. You're, I see you're shuffling. So no, while you're getting your you're things great. You're a pro. gathered, sorry, go on. I was gonna fill everybody in. When I began comedy, Graham was working all the was I thought working all the clubs. I didn't know until we talked about it a couple of days ago that you were only working at Stand Up New York. I just thought you were a guy who was already passed at every club in New York City. You were always at Stand Up New York. You were crushing. You were amazing. And to me, you're like the guy, the pioneer. You're the Lewis and Clark of Canadian comedians in New York City. Mm. After you, all the guys who are still here started flooding in here, and it's almost like, hey, Graham K's in New York doing it. We we can do it too. That's what it appeared to be to me, and I wonder if that is accurate. Um, A little bit. I I think what happened was is... um, So I was... I was that was the first A club I was working at, but I was working at a couple B clubs, but it doesn't matter. Right. But the the I was here illegally and I was an undocumented worker. Gotcha. I used to call it illegal and then a Hispanic person told me I should call it undocumented, so I'm trying to change it. That's um and uh but anyway, I and so I could only that was only a club that a club that paid in cash, so I had to work there. And I couldn't there was other clubs that passed me, but I couldn't work there cuz they paid by check and um crazy and then what uh, clubs were those the there was times square art center oh, i remember t- uh, and uh there were the 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 um and I, I didn't really i wasn't ready to audition for the seller but i thought about it but they make you they want they ask for a social right and like all the other clubs ask for a social right, even right. if they pay in for tax for stuff. taxes and stuff. Like W9s or whatever. but like yeah. stand up new york was super sketch so yeah. <laughs> they're just <laughs> shout out gabe <laughs> yeah and <laughs> And uh, anyway, so I, uh, I was, I was, I was here. Like I just came. I wanted to come for a summer because I was like twenty six years old, twenty five years old, and I was like, I gotta start comedy. So I, I'll go to New York for a summer, and that'll be like two years anywhere else uh, for comedy. And um, I got a summer job, and I, 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 my, my job was doing logistics for a rich Jewish kid summer camp. Uh, and the head office was in Marinick, and we would send these kids, like, like organized plane rides for these kids to go all over the world during the summer. And I, I lasted four weeks, cause, and I got fired for sending uh, a kid to the wrong city in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I, and then I, uh, <laughs> and, and then he, I don't know, he might be dead, but, um, <laughs> But they fired me, but I had enough money to pay for the rest of the summer for, for this place I was subletting. So all I needed was food money. So I was like going on Craigslist and doing like weird odd jobs, handing out flyers at the Javits Center. Okay, um, yeah. I, got, I got a job uh, being, a, being like a stock photo model on a rooftop. Oh. Mm, and then the, the, uh, my chest was too hairy, so they made me put on a shirt and sit in the back. Mm. And then... Um, <laughs> And the guy, that, yeah, I remember the guy goes, a hairy model. <laughs> and I was just like, it's coming back, man. And it never did. And, um, <laughs> and, then, um, and then I got a job. Um, I was like, I should, I, I should try and get a job working at a restaurant because I know they, sometimes they pay under the table. And then they, um, they, they, no one would hire me. 
uh, they'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. And then, like, I'm not, I don't have a social, though. And they'd be like, well, we, we can't hire you. And then I was like, maybe I'll go to Chelsea. Because I, I mean, noticed that all these restaurants had, like, these, like, like, Russian ladies as the hostess. I'm like, sure, they don't have. There's no way they all have. They just, like, I'll reverse it. I'll go to, I'll go to a gay neighborhood. And I'll, I'll, whatever. I was, like, a hot piece of ass when I was, like, 25. Mm. And um, and I and I went I went in and, and then I got hired uh, and then they That's to great. be a waiter and then they put I got they paid in cash and we actually didn't, we didn't get paid actually that's that's a lie we didn't get paid any money we only got tips and um and I worked there and once you have a job you can stay and then I started getting ingrained in the comedy community and then I got like um uh so I got you know. I started working there and then I had to, no one, no one in Canada, here's, here's what I'm getting to is nobody in Canada knew I was alive. So I wasn't really the Lois and Clark. And then when I moved, I had to, I wanted to get a visa to, I got a co- an, uh, audition to, uh, to Hang be. On. I got to pause you. You just said Lois and Clark. Which I'm not is from America. I don't know your Superman culture. Superman and his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Lewis and Clark is the explorer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for a second i was like fuck did i say that wrong no it's such a <laughs> great, really great different thing oh my god i don't know I, I, we didn't learn about them in, in our school so i don't really don't know <laughs> i hear it around and uh yeah. <laughs> i'm kind of guessing every time i say it yeah and i still great. honestly even though you just repeated it like what the right word is i the right version is i still don't know i forgot <laughs> well, it immediately what was the call? yeah funny. i love it Graham, so go, i remember one day oh because we... it's two men a woman there wouldn't be a woman explorer well, Sacagawea Sac- Sac- was Jawea. intrinsic to their, yeah. ex- ex- you know, their she was the whole guide. mission. She was a lady? Yes. She was a, a, a Shoshone uh, woman at 16 who tagged along and in doing so ended up becoming probably the most important part of the entire adventure. Yes. She was able to negotiate with other tribes and help them learn all this stuff as they crossed to the West. I don't believe it. She's on the golden dollar coin, which we no longer use. <laughs> no, you can get it in the subway. Yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Dude, and we... you can go to the bodega with it, and they're like, I'd rather, we don't take I'd rather you just leave. <laughs> <laughs> just take it. Just steal it. Get lost. Yeah. But I'm giving you an American, American loony, buddy. <laughs> it's a loony. You got one of these American loonies. It's the closest thing we have <laughs> to a loony. You ever seen a loony? Yeah, dude. I love loonies, Lucky. and I like toonies, too. That's right. That's fun. And so anyway, I, 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 I got a Conan audition, and then... Um, I, I was legally unallowed to do uh, Conan, so I was like, okay, well, I got to move back to Canada, and then I was an open micer, and then that's when Nathan McIntosh moved down. We overlapped for like two weeks. Uh, he's the real uh, Lois and Clark. I remember, um, meeting, I remember meeting him, too. <laughs> he's, uh, he's the real Sacagawea. Sacagawea. <laughs> Sacagawea. Sacagawea. Yeah. Sorry to all my native friends out there. But, but hold on. You went back to Canada... And you had to basically start again. Yeah, I was an open micer. Again, I was passed at four clubs in New York, and I was an open micer in Toronto. Crazy. That must have sucked. Oh, yeah. Sucked big time. <laughs> and then and how long were you in Canada for? Well, in order to get a work, a work visa, you have, you have to prove to the American government you're so funny, you won't be on welfare once you move here. So that takes a lot of doing. Letters and lawyers and L- you have to, I had to hire circus a lawyer. visas. I had to hire a lawyer. It cost me fourteen grand, which is a lot for me when I, you know, had no money and still don't. But uh, they, 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 uh, I had to get um, articles written about me in in the press saying how good I was. I had to, uh, you know, be on TV. I had to have people of like high standing write letters for me. I had to have sponsors in the U.S. I had to have letters saying that I was going to work at these jobs for two years and have this amount of income coming in. I had to show them like show posters. I had to show them that I won awards, international awards. I had to show them that I judged competitions of my, uh, uh, in my field, showing that I'm a person of excellence or whatever. And that stuff takes, you basically have to become like a, a DE list celebrity. And I tried to do that as quick as I could so I could carry over any momentum I had in New York. And then I got, an agent and at just for last festival which is in montreal and she was a big la agent and she was like you should move to la i'm gonna make you a big star 
and uh we overlapped during that time yeah we did you were i remember you were writing a i was thinking about this the other day actually uh you <laughs> did i talk about this on the podcast the it's bike good. biking yeah this guy had a little tiny bike yeah he was like a little tiny bmx bike he's like six three or whatever and and he was a pa yeah. and didn't tell anybody that he had a bike because everyone in LA has a car. <laughs> and they're like, go get this. And he'd come back all sweaty like a half hour later than he's supposed to. And they'd be like, what? where were you? And he's like, traffic. Yeah. <laughs> and his knees were all shot because he had a yeah. little tiny bike. Yeah, because the seat was too low and it was <laughs> stuck. So I couldn't, I couldn't oh adjust it and I couldn't God. afford to buy a new bike. <laughs> Those are the days, man. Those are the days, baby. And, um, and then I st- was an open micer again in LA. So I, I've been an open micer three times. And then I had to move. Then I didn't. How long were you in LA for? Two years, huh. but and then I was I had already had like a girlfriend that I was living with in Toronto. We lived together because in that three year time I had fallen in love with somebody, and then she want she wanted to keep the relationship going. So did I. So she moved down to L.A. even though she wasn't legally allowed to work there. And then that didn't work out obviously because she wasn't allowed to work and she became like a huge alcoholic. And um, Jesus. and uh, yeah, man. It's a real pain in the ass when you can't work here. So Crazy. it kind of like I'm still career wise, like riding the ship as I look at the Titanic behind you mm. sinking. <laughs> so, so hold on. Uh, after LA, did you move back to New York? Yeah, I didn't like it. So I moved back to New York. I like to move every, uh, as soon as I get momentum in a city, I like to move. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is getting too easy. Yeah, yeah. But... I'm out. <laughs> and then I started half over again here because it had been five years since I've lived here. So it was wow. like. Yeah. You know, and how long have you been in New York now? Um, two and a half years. Okay, there so, was just no spots in LA, and I didn't like the city. And then I was only getting like at that when I first moved there, I was I got like like thirty, forty auditions a year, and then it was down to like three, four auditions. No, and it was, and they were like, man, I was like, how come? Like, am I just not good? And then she was like, my agent was like, ah, I don't want any more white guys uh, right now. I was like, okay. I think I don't know if that's all true. I think that she was kind of like, yeah, maybe I, maybe I always wasn't. blame it on the wave when you're not getting a lot of. Applause. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I just like bombed all my auditions. And mm. I didn't know about it, you know. Well, dude, we shot Graham and I were in this web series with uh, Chris Stefano and Giannis Papas, which was called Bay Ridge Boys. Yeah, and I remember that day. I forget what had happened to me, but I had some shitty thing happen where I like acted kind of crazy for a couple of days and. Let's not call it a bender, but, you know, that's probably the closest word we could use. And we don't have to use this story, and we can cut this out if we don't end up using it. But I remember you making me feel better by telling me about a story about when you lived in Budapest, and you went to Berlin for a date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that struck me as a, 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 an incredible oops moment. Yeah, yeah. Potentially. Yeah. I don't know if that's something you want to talk no, about. No, for sure. You obviously don't It's on the it. list. I, I wrote that a list. It's extremely interesting a, and funny. A list of weird stories, and that's one. This is a good one. So I, when I out of college, uh, yeah, we, I got a job with the, through the Canadian government to work for a private American shipping company um, based out of Budapest, Hungary. <laughs> So I lived in Budapest, Hungary for a year. How fucking insane is that? Yeah. In the, and basically, we're shipping things into Iraq uh, during the height of the Iraq war. Jesus. And um, anyway, I told my boss he was a war profiteer. <laughs> <laughs> He was a war profiteer. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> what a what an un- like most people are like fuck you man fuck you I hate You're this I'm out. And that's such a big thing to say to your boss. Yeah. Amazing. I remember we were, I I we he used to take the it was a smaller company we were we we were we were doing a lot of big stuff like there was only two. Sh- one, two companies in Baghdad International Airport, they called it Camp Victory at the time, um, that had, uh, so the one was DHL and the other was, was us. And we also had a, uh, an office in the Green Zone, which was like um, a part of uh, Baghdad that was uh, surrounded on three sides by, I think is the Tigris River, and we walled off at the bottom. And it was like, so these are two safe zones. And um, so we got a lot of business through that. And I thought that we were going to be doing a lot more like altruistic stuff when they hired me. I thought like we were going right. to be like, you know, helping, helping, right. uh, 
you know, rebuild hospitals and working for doing NATO stuff. And basically, we were just shipping everything that wasn't a weapon to U.S. Army bases and trying to make a profit, like whatever. And um, <clears throat> and then um, he used to take us out on Fridays, and um, I, I I I remember he, I used to try and sit far away from him because like. I get a little loose lipped <laughs> after a couple of wobbly pops. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> wobbly pops. Dude. And then it, it, the seating worked out where he sat right beside me. I was like, nah, fuck it. This is going to not work out well. <laughs> and then after, sure enough, after like by my third beer, I was, was, start, I was like, you know, it's kind of, how do you feel about that? You know, you guys are making money off this. And, you know, was, and he's like, well, you work here. I was like, well, I didn't really know we were going to be doing this. And I honestly had an issue with it. And, and um, moralistically, how do you, you know, he's like, He's like, what do you mean? Well, I think you're a bit of a war profiteer, you know? And <laughs> and then we had this huge argument, and I'm a history major, so he he was trying to, like, outflank me with historical facts, and I was like, right. no, well, what about, you know, blah, right. blah, blah, blah. And you. then he then, then he basically, um, I was very cheap labor because he was using this sort of Canadian government um, program where the Canadian government would pay young people to work overseas. So he was getting basically free labor. So he didn't want to fire me per se. Gotcha. So he just sort of changed my position to more of a sales role where I was more aut autonomous. And I, he's like, basically I didn't do any work. And so I would get, I would like give myself like three day weekends a lot. And um, I went to, I was like, let me go to um, Munich for the weekend. And I, um, went to went to Munich, and it's beautiful, right? It's really awesome. And I went. I would. I was like young, so I'd go on these like crazy benders and stuff. And like, I take like the midnight train on like Thursday, and so I could get there Friday morning. And uh, I almost got robbed a couple times by gypsies <laughs> at gypsies. nighttime. <laughs> yeah, like, they'd like come into your car, and like, I'd get. I was you know bigger back then, and but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Don't fuck with that guy. <laughs> well, I don't know. They just they they, yeah. they just want an easy right. mark s yeah. snatch. They don't want to like f fight. Probably beat me up, but then they you know I might get a black eye at least. I would like to hope so. But anyway, you 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 did end up coming. No, no, no. Stuff? But like they, they that's what, I'm thinking that's what they're. Mm -hmm. They look. Oh, he's too big. We'll just get the next. Yeah. You know, loser. And um. Anyway, so um. I I, uh, I went to I went to Munich. I'll speed up the story. I went to went went to Munich. Um, got went I went on like a, a, a I I stayed out all night. Um, and then got like woke up early to go on this World War II bike tour. And um, and I'm we ended we ended up. I met this girl on the tour, and she was like, "Oh well, I have to go on the. I'm le we're leaving right now to go on a train to Budapest, but I'll be there when you get there." let's meet up like she basically was like let's i want to have sex with you in budapest and i was like good i like this this is a good plan for me and, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then um then then i stayed at the this beer hall after the tour and i was just you know like you know when you're 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 traveling you're like more open to like talk to people and yeah. i sat down by these two german girls and started talking to them and they were like, well, hey, you seem nice. Do you want to, like, go to some club that, like, is not a tourist here? And I was like, hell yeah. And um, and so I, the, I wanted this. We are in the Hofbrau house. It's, like, a yeah, famous yeah, beer hall. There. And I wanted that Stein. So I, I, it's, like, a thing that people might. You steal it. You yeah. steal it. And I, so I stole it. And I was a like, big mug. A big mug. I was like, I fucking got this. I got this, I got this big ass mug, the Stein. And then they wouldn't let me into this club. Yeah, that, uh, and so I hid it um, outside. And we went into the club, and I hadn't slept at all. And um, and I'm like, you, you know, talking to these girls in a booth, and and I think one of them liked me more than the other one. And then I I, I kind of was like, I was kind of going in and out of blacking out, out of like being tired and really drunk. And then I kind of look up, and the other one's gone, and the other one's like like rubbing my leg, and I was like, oh, sick. And then I lean in for a kiss, and then I pass out. And, Cause I have to close. I could close your eyes. I, I, I closed my eyes to kiss her, and I fell asleep and fell forward and knocked her beer on her like lap. And then she was like, "What the?" F she was like, "Scheiße!" 
what are you doing with the, my jeans my my pants my pants <laughs> and i was like no babe it's cool you know whatever we'll just like get some water we can still have sex it's so, so cool you know and then she was like no <laughs> and she like left and uh and um that's crazy. And then I followed her out to the street and I was like, no, come on, it's cool. We should still hang. And she like flagged the cab and then she like opened the door and I was like, no, oh, come on. Let me in, you know, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And she was like, fine, get in. And I got in and then immediately passed out. <laughs> and then I woke up in a Munich suburb and a cabbie was shaking me, going, wake up, wake up. Um, you got to pay for this. And I was, I, and I was like, oh, okay. And I, I paid, got out of the cab, cab drove away, looked around. She was long gone. I was like, what the hell? I was like, where, hello? Where, like, are you around the corner? Like, <laughs> I'm, re I'm ready to have sex now. <laughs> and then, and then I realized what happened that she just ditched me. And, and, um, and I was like, I mean, she did the right thing, obviously. For sure. And and I and but I was like, you know, I was like, fuck you, <laughs> I was just screaming into the night in this supper. <laughs> and and uh, and then um, I so I there's no is before smartphones, um, so I couldn't I, I couldn't call a cab or I, and I so I just I found a a phone booth across the street and I didn't, I didn't have any money and I just sort of slept and I, I went to go sleep in the phone booth. And I was like ready to hunker down. It was like really cold. <laughs> it, was, it was winter, and uh, and I was like, "Well, I, I'll probably survive the night, you know." And and then um, a cab pulls up, and all these like German frat boys get out, and I run up, and I'm like, "Oh, great! Can you take me to the train station?" He's like, "Yeah, hop in." I was like, "Awesome!" And I the the cab I just paid forty five euro, which was like. Um, a hundred and fifty Canadian dollars for that first cab ride, and I was getting paid in Canadian, so I was like, "This is like," I knew, and he, I knew it was gonna be another one. I didn't have the money, um, and I was like on me, and I didn't want to pay three hundred dollars for this cab ride to nowhere. Um, my hostel was down by the train station, but I didn't tell him what hostel. And I remember my old roommate; she was like a sort of heavier set woman. And she used to always say that she would like run away from cabs and i was like if she can do it i can do it <laughs> and so so i was sitting in the back seat we finally get to the train station after like a half hour and um the guy goes okay 45 euro and i go uh nine euro and i like like i was like i have no money and i like open the door and just book it and i'm out the left side he's on the driver's side and he got out of his driver's side and then did like a um, like a, a Dukes of Hazard thing over his own hood. It slid over his own hood, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like already booking it, and he just barely missed his hand on me, and I swiped it away, and I start sprinting down the street. He gets back in his cab and starts uh, driving after me, and I'm like ducking around like these like streets and zigzagging and I um I, I I he's like radioing other cars and I could hear other like like cabs start like turning around or whatever and I like duck down this alleyway and um I'm down an alleyway and it's a it's a dead end I'm like oh shit and I I jump behind a dumpster and try to hide um and I hear this car slowly idling um, coming from the left side of the opening of the alleyway, and it, it's just, and I could hear the radio. It's a cab because I can, they're talking to each other, and um, the cab. I, I'm like crouching, making myself as small as I can. And I see the cab slowly pass the opening, and then keep going. I'm like, oh, so they didn't see me. Then I then I hear, and I'm like, fuck. So I start running towards the opening as fast as I can. Because I knew I'd be trapped if I stayed there, and I'm just running, running, running. So I'm running towards the guy. Gets out of the cab, and he does like a sweep kick. This cabbie, uh, it's a different cabbie. He does like a sweep kick, and he, I just run through it. Like I was a like peak physical shape at that. I played like Canadian college football, and 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 so like I I but my I remember my knee, my my jean exploded. <laughs> like there's a big a big rip, 
uh, and I was bleeding. And then I'm like running down the street and the sun's coming up and there was like older tourists are now awake and they're holding maps and walking around. And uh, and there's like three cabbies chasing me on foot and they're like, stop thief and i'm like <laughs> and that's what he said and i'm like we i weave thief. past these like tourists that look like my parents and they're looking at me like i'm like a crazy and i'm like i'm this guy yeah how yeah. did i You're become the this guy you I, become the gypsy i'm the fucking weirdo now. and like and i and then um they had radioed the police and i like i like i ran out to like a main a main uh, boulevard and a p- cop car goes boom and i'm like like almost like hits me on purpose and I just sort of like my hands go on the hood of the cop car and they run out and they're like stop right there and I'm like okay and like I'm like help me help me ah, he's he was trying to touch my dick I swear <laughs> 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 that cabbie's trying to touch my dick and I had to run away and I'm not gay and I kept saying that and the cop was like what the fuck and then um, and, they, and, the, and the cop and the, the cabbies were like I'm looking back on it I was such like a piece of shit these are like hard working people and I'm like some you know in their eyes some rich dick <laughs> tourist you know and and I just um, the, the, the cops were like, okay, um, you're going to go to an ATM right there, uh, and pull, get out some money and you're going to, how much was it? 45. You're going to give him 45 and that's going to be it. And I was like, I oh, touched my dick. What? He's like, you're going to do this or you're going to go to jail. And I was like, okay. And I paid him and they gave me a receipt and, <laughs> and then he said, don't ever come back to Germany. That's what the cops said. And then, uh, and then, um, then I had to go and, uh, I had a train to catch. I had to go back to work. Um, I had to be at work, um, in like the, the next day, but I had like a, I had like a three o'clock train to catch and I would get back to work or I, I'd, I'd be, um, I get back to Budapest the night before work. That's what it was. I had a three, three, or something like that. So I like, I go, I'm like, no, you know what? I have enough time to go back to um, the, the Hofbra house to get that beer stein. I'll just buy it. I went back to the Hofbra house, got the beer stein, missed my train because I did that. And I was like, I'll get the next train. Next train didn't leave till uh, like 10 p.m. And I was like, oh, it's going to be tough because I, I had to transfer in, in, uh, in Vienna, Austria to go to Budapest. Um, so I get on the train. I still haven't slept. It's been a couple days. I go, I go to Vienna. I'm like, all right, next train to Budapest. Like, like, well, the train, next train to Budapest doesn't leave till 7 a.m. And I'm like, I gotta be at work at not, I gotta be at work at like 9:30 or whatever. Luckily, it's only like an hour and a half train ride. And um, and I'm like, I'm like, well, I guess I'll just sleep in the train station. And they're like, the the train station closes down. And so I had no, I was like, oh man, okay. So I'm just, now I'm just walking around Vienna at, at night trying to like find a place to sleep. And I'm like, um, so I, I get a cab and, uh, I, I don't have any, and wait, so, yeah, I get a cab and I'm like, take me to the near, the nearest youth hostel. And he, 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 he takes me there and, um, I didn't have any money on me or cash on me. And, uh, and I was like, well, I can't run away from this cab. It didn't go well. And he was like, what are you going to, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was going to be so expensive. Like, I don't have, I literally don't have any money, you know, um, any, any, he, and he's like, what do you got there? And I was like a beer stein. And, and I was like, do you want it? And he looked at it and he was like, yeah, I'll take this. So he, then he took the beer stein. <laughs> the whole reason why I'm there is because it's fucking beer stein. And then, <laughs> and then. And then I go into the youth hostel and I'm like, one room, you know, I, I um, and the guy goes, and, 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 and he goes, okay, we have uh, one bed left available. And I'm like, well, um, can you give me a wake up call for 6 a.m.? And, and he goes, we don't do wake up calls. And, and I, I, didn't, I didn't have a, um, a cell phone that had, it was like a little tiny brick phone. It didn't have an alarm on it. Uh, so I was just like, oh shit. So I just walked back to the train station. Oh my God. And it took like two hours to walk back. And I, and I found like an all night coffee shop and like, I tried to sleep in there and they, they kept, they kicked me out or whatever. And then I just, by the time I walked back to the train station, it was, it was time for the train and I had still hadn't slept. I got on the train, 
went to work, um, started throwing up out of extreme exhaustion, said I had the flu, um, went back to my apartment, and then that girl, the original girl that was like, I want to have sex with you in Budapest, called me. He's like, okay, I'm, this is the only night I'm really able to hang out. And I was like, <laughs> I was like shitting and puking, I could, so I couldn't, I couldn't do that. So that's the whole reason. Whole reason I was. <laughs> oh, that sucks, man. Yeah. Holy shit. I had something like four what days. What a fucking nightmare, dude. Yeah. Did for, that make you feel better? For so <laughs> that made much feel better. time. That was a nightmare. That sucks. Yeah. To live through. I I, I can't like I, we've all had travel stories where shit went wrong. I mean, I, you know, I've spent time running around Europe and shit. Scary moments. But nothing like that, That's where really at bad. every single turn, something went wrong. Yeah. I mean, yep. fuck, dude. So, so you didn't end up seeing the girl. No. Did you end up finally I had sleeping? no sex. Yeah. <laughs> no, no girls sex was have sex with me. And you had two pretty <laughs> good opportunities yeah. to, to make that happen. Yeah. Wow. And I, had, I hadn't had sex in like six months at that point. I was hot to trot. Yeah. Damn, dude. Yeah. That is fucking Damn. wild yeah what you know maybe this is a dumb question but you didn't have a credit card that you could kind of like well that's up. how i had a uh uh i had a um a bank machine a card that i was using yeah that i could have used on the um i could have used for the hotel but i couldn't use the cabbie didn't it wasn't didn't work for the right, cabbie right yeah. And there was no, like, I didn't, there was, no, it's not like here where there's ATMs everywhere. Right, like right, Vienna, right. there's just like no ATMs. And there was like, man, I don't know. I, could just, I just couldn't get my hands on cash, you know? Dude, fuck, that sucks. Yeah. Dude, I have, I have a, I'm going to tell a quick story of my time in Munich. Because mm -hmm. I went for Oktoberfest. Is that okay? Please. Because I know it's okay. this is like a story episode. But I'll just do it quickly. I'll be a quick. So I went to Munich for Oktoberfest when I was a junior in college in the fall. Mm -hmm. It was October, obviously. Must have been 2010. Uh, I was studying in southern France for a semester, and I flew up to Munich to meet my buddies. They were studying in Florence, mm -hmm. but they had taken an overnight bus. I arrived on Thursday night. My dad had a business partner in Munich whose daughter had a lovely apartment near the tents and had said that I was welcome to stay in their spare bedroom in their basement. So I arrived on Thursday night, nice. met this couple. They were so nice. They were probably like 30 and I was, you know, 20, 21. Mm. And uh, we had like a glass of wine and a lovely conversation. And then I went to bed at like 1030. The next morning, uh, my friends arrived and I had told the couple, hey, I have two other friends coming. Is there any chance that they could stay with me? And they were like, yeah, no problem. But my friends arrived with like two more of their friends. Oh, geez. So all of a sudden there were five of us staying in this mm. one basement bedroom. Five 21-year-olds staying in your home yeah, here and, for Oktoberfest. And my yeah, friends had nightmare. fucked me because like this wasn't my home to give another additional two-spot invitation to. No. But luckily the couple was super cool. They were like, yeah, we get it. We understand Oktoberfest. And my friends arrived. They hadn't really slept on the bus. But we knew we needed to get to the tents early in order to get in during this peak weekend. Mm -hmm. So uh, as the woman drove us to the, the place to drop us off in the tents or whatever, she said, listen, you need to understand German beer at these tents is like 8% ABV mm -hmm. or 9%. She was like, your traditional American Bud Light, 4.5%. In a 12 ounce can, you're drinking a Stein, which is like 34 ounces. Basically, every beer you order is going to be the equivalent of drinking four beers, six five, yeah. American, five to six American beers. So drink slowly. And we were like, yeah, we got it. You know, <laughs> fucking old lady. Yeah. <laughs> the old bat. We walk into the Hofbrau tent at 9 a.m. We yeah. had gotten there early. And we get a table. 9 a.m. That's so insane. Yeah. 9 a.m. Yeah. Dude, and it was already packed. Yeah. It was the last weekend of Oktoberfest. So it was like truly a, you know, Star Wars premiere level. Get there early. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we come in and the place is so filled with secondhand smoke that it's green. Uh, there's the big ceremonial band, the 15-piece band in the center. And then all the tables around. 
and everybody is dressed in the garb of their country. Le Lederhosen? Yeah, but but all, some people doing that, but then there's also like the Italian tables all wearing oh, right, blue right, right. for and, and like stuff, and then the Dutch just tables drunk all in samurais orange. over there. <laughs> 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 I think this is racist. <laughs> <laughs> so just everybody, everybody's with their country, and it's very festive, and, and um, we, we order a round of beers, and... Uh, I start taking, I take a couple sips, and I'm like, "Wow, this is great!" And uh, you get kind of caught. It's up crazy in... how much better the beer is. Yeah, there. yeah, it goes down real smooth. Yeah, it is really good. And at one point, the table to our right started talking to us, and then they started doing like a raise your glass toast, and they were, and then when when one table does this, the entire tent of you know four thousand people starts raising their glasses in unison, and then you do like a a big quaff of your drink. But we thought it was like a chug. So I ended up chugging the rest of that beer. So by 9.20, I was already six beers in. Yep. By 10 a.m., I'd had another two steins. Oh, my God, dude. And I, it was basically like 15 to 18 beers. And I blacked out. At 10.30, I disappeared. <laughs> I apparently walked out didn't tell anyone i was leaving none of my friends i got to uh i started walking away from the camps like the tents and all that mm -hmm. and i found this like street and i started walking along that and i pulled out my phone and i i, I, found, I found this out kind of like later and i called the woman whose house we were staying at and she was at work it was a friday and i was like hey uh i'm lost I'm in the middle of Munich. I have no idea where I am. She's like, all right, I'll come pick you up. So she comes and picks me up. This is like noon. I had only been there. I had only been at the tents, at the party for an hour and a half. Yeah. And she's like, all right, I'll come help you. So at 11 a.m. she finds me. I was standing on a median in the middle of a thoroughfare. Yeah, yeah. And just like waving at cars, hoping one of them was her. She picks me up. She brings me back to her house. At 1130, she like puts me down to bed. I remember later that day, I woke up out of this drunken stupor, and I went to the sink and puked, and then I went back to bed, and at some point, my friends came back from the whole thing and went to bed. I woke up at like 5 a.m. I had slept from 11 a.m. the previous day until 5 a.m. That's crazy, dude. It's <laughs> just like 20 hours. Yeah. <laughs> the I old a.m. to a.m. And I woke up and I was like, Skip the p.m. I'm ready to rock. Yeah. Let's go back. That was fun. Like, yeah. I felt so rested. Yeah. And now it was, you know, Saturday. It was like the last day. And my friends were like banged up, but I rallied them. We go back to the, the, the tents. This day, I knew to, to measure myself a bit better. I'd learned my lesson. So I was really nursing a beer over the course of like an hour and a half. And then I would get another one and nurse that. We finally made it to the end of the night where it, the whole place turns into this massive dance party and everyone like takes their shirts off and shit and you just make friends with everybody. And uh, our goal was to steal some of the souvenir steins, mm -hmm. but we didn't, we hadn't been able to do it. We tried, we tried walking out with them under our shirts and the guy was like, fuck you, give that back. So at like 10 p.m., we walked out into the courtyard area that's still part of the tent, but it's, you know, outside. And we saw this big fence on the other side of which was the tents that were on the front side were like carnival games. Mm -hmm. And that was on the main walking street through the whole grounds. And my buddy was like, all right, I'm going to go to the other side and you're going to throw the mugs over. And it was like 10 feet tall. You couldn't see each other. It was just a big wall. You couldn't uh, see. So scary for the catcher. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's really <laughs> heavy. You said to like things. pick it out yeah. missiles from <laughs> under the air and just yeah. be like, get under it. Yeah. You know, like a punt. Jeez. And we had no coordination. We didn't know how long. He had to walk like 150 yards down to the opening, go out and then come back. Yeah. And so we didn't have any like, you know, give us a signal. Oh! I'm in place, you know, <laughs> and he, I just, I just waited like five minutes and then assumed he was ready. As it turned out, he had gone out into the street, 
seen a stand that was selling rotisserie chickens, bought one, and completely forgot <laughs> about the mission that we were on. <laughs> so five minutes go by. I'm standing myself. I take the mug. I figure he's there. And I take the first mug by the handle, and I, like, hook shot it, like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And I don't put enough on it. So it lands at the top of the tent and starts rolling back down and then crashes at my feet and explodes. So I'm like, all right, I got to throw the next one harder. So the next one, I went like this. somebody. I went, wham! And I threw it. And I heard it explode on the ground on the other side. And just as I had let it go, a police officer saw me do this. Oh, God. And he came over to me and he goes, what the fuck are you doing? He takes my hands and puts them behind my back, puts me in handcuffs, leads me to a police like outpost in yeah. the middle of this whole fucking carnival and <laughs> like, thought the nazi regime was over man father, would my grandfather fight for yeah <laughs> <laughs> if it weren't for me you'd be speaking german <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> that that's so this guy didn't really like speak English that well, but he finally found a, a commander or somebody who who did. And this guy came over and they took my driver's license and they were like, uh, what, "What you know, what happened?" And I was like, "Well, we had this plan. We wanted to, to get souvenir steins, and my friend, he's very athletic. I figured he'd be able to catch them." They were like, "You could have killed somebody," and I was like, "I don't know. We just we tried and failed so many times." And I was just very honest. And uh, eventually he was like, all right, listen, you know, we're going to let you go. But if we see you again tonight, you're going to get arrested and you'll spend the night in jail. And I was like, no problem. Thank you. They let us go. And then I found my friends. And then we went to a, we walked up this hill, very steep hill. And we immediately saw a nightclub. My, your story had a lot of like echoes of mine. So we see this nightclub. And we get in the line. And one of my friends was so drunk that he couldn't keep his eyes open. So we, we wait in the line. We get to the front. And the bouncer's like, your friend can't come in. He's too mm -hmm. fucked up. We're like, okay. So we circle back to the back of the line. We like trade shirts <laughs> and per figure that it, he won't recognize us again. We get to the front again. He looks at the guy and he's like, yeah, again, this guy can't even stand. Forget it. And we like ended up giving the guy like 40 euros. And we were like, can you just let us in? And he was like, yeah, okay, fine. So he lets <laughs> us in. We get in. Your there, friend is fine now. Yeah. <laughs> there was an 80s cover band playing American 80s hits on stage, live band. And they were playing the Baywatch theme song. It says new music to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the lead oh. singer was wearing a red swimsuit and had one of those like flotation devices on mm -hmm. a rope. And was like belting this out. And we were like, this is fucking awesome. So we order a couple drinks. We start just going nuts. We lose sight of our one friend who's super fucked up. And so my buddy Greg and I are just like looking around, trying to meet girls, whatever. We meet some girls. We start dancing with them, British girls, having a great time. At one point, one of the girls goes, hey, look at that guy on stage. And we look up. And our friend had fallen asleep with his head on the subwoofer of the baseball. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's crazy. And two seconds later, security were carrying him out like a drowning victim under the arms and by the legs. And we were just like, fuck it. We're not going to deal with that. My buddy Greg was like, we got to figure out, you know, if he's OK, whatever. So he went out. He was like, don't worry about us. We'll find our way home. You're doing well with this girl. I end up continuing to dance with this girl, and I was like square dancing with her to fucking, you know, 80s hits. She's taken with me. We get into a cab. We go back to her hotel, which was really far away, but she pays for the cab. We go up to the hotel concierge. It's like three in the morning. I have a 9 a.m. easy jet flight back to Nice, one of those budget Ryanair. Yeah general seating no seat assignment fucking Can't shit yeah seat belts are extra yeah so i know yeah. i have to go back to the apartment to get my shit in the morning and then go back out to the munich airport which is like an hour away but i'm whatever so excited to be like with this girl we're at the concierge she goes oh shit my friend's staying upstairs i'd rather we have privacy i'm just gonna get us another room and i'm like who the 
fuck is this girl? Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it's fucking the heaviest tourist weekend in Munich. Yeah. And it was like midnight or three in the morning. Yeah. She just spends another like 250 euros on another room. Yeah. So we get up to the room and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to make the most of this. I take a shower. Hell I drink yeah. a whole bunch of water. Yeah. I use all the bath products. Smart to drink put, water. Put on a robe. Yeah. I come out of my robe and she's on the bed naked already. And I was like, this is just heaven. Mm -hmm. And I remember... She was like, Francis, have you been a good boy? And I was like, I mean, I pay my taxes. And she was like, all right, because, um, you know, you've not got any STDs, have you? And I was like, no, I don't think so. And she was like, oh, well, me need I was like, what about you? And she was like, well, I'm a doctor. And she turned out she was a doctor. Mm -hmm. And that was why she was able to afford all of this shit. We had sex. In the morning, I woke up. She was gone. Uh, and it was like 7.45. And I get into a cab and I race back to my house, gather all my shit, thank them. My friends are asleep. Get back in the cab. It's one of those Mercedes E320 cabs that they have in fucking European yeah. Yeah. countries. Yeah. And some old woman driving. And I was like, listen, I have a flight in an hour. I need you to get us there as fast as possible. So we get on the Audubon. And she, I'm not kidding you. Such I did the conversion. Whipping. She went 120 miles an hour. It's very fast. It was the coolest thing ever. I get to the airport. I then, race through security, sprint, get to my flight as they're doing last call, run up, get on the flight. But again, all the seats are full. The only seat that was open, the very back row in between these two very overweight Jamaican ladies who were wearing tons of perfume, lots of jewelry, all this stuff. So I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. Keep in mind, I've been wearing the same clothes for three days. I've been stuffed up in these smoke-filled sausage tents, eating bratwurst and drinking heavy beer, puking, all this shit. And now I'm sweating it all out from the run that I've done. I sit down between them. I take my shoes off. I was wearing boat shoes with no socks. You're oh, disgusting. God. That's gross. <laughs> I pass out. What a very... Oh, 10 God. minutes into the flight. A very Harvard boy thing to do. The woman to my <laughs> left starts shaking me by the shoulder i wake up i'm like huh what's up she goes please you've got to stop farting we, we can't breathe <laughs> in like a heavy jamaican accent people were crying around us i looked around in my sleep i was just shitting my pants basically we had a layover in zurich i get out i run to the men's bathroom i threw up in the urinal blood blood coming up oh, that's not good uh, which i didn't understand no uh I eventually had a meal, collected myself, and then flew back to Nice. And it was like the, the weekend that probably took the most years off my life. But that's my story. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's a good story. That's a crazy I, your, voice. You, you, yours, yours, uh, yours has a lot of, uh, it's different than mine because you have a lot of um, uh, making flights and uh, having sex. Graham's is way worse. Uh, <laughs> Graham's story was significantly worse than yours. Meaning like the, the severity. Yeah. <laughs> Yours is so much worse, so much worse than mine. But <laughs> yeah, yours is intense though. Well, Where can we uh, find you on social media? Uh, Instagram K, uh, Insta at Insta first name Graham like the cracker, last name K A Y. Instagram K, that's Instagram, believe it or not, and Mr. Graham K on uh, the Twitter. And where might you be on the road that some people could find you? Well, um, if you, uh, when does this come out? This is, this is where were we? We're in January right now. Oh, guys, I got an album coming out January 14th. You guys got to get it. Uh, it's called Girlfriend Material. It's about my last breakup. Um, uh, it's coming out on 800 pound Gorilla Records. It's hot. Uh, and you guys can, you'll be able to stream it on Pandora. Uh, and, uh, I got, I also got a, an album out, an older album out on Pandora and, um, um what's that up? Spotify and all that stuff, but you can buy it, uh, January 14th. Also Canadians, I have a comedy special coming out on Crave TV, uh, February. Look for it. Graham K, uh, Instagram K. I post a lot of funny videos. Please follow me. I need your help desperately. <laughs> Lovely. January 10th, Fairfield Comedy Club at Not Julio. That's, That's the deal. I'm at Francis C. C. Ellis, of course, and uh, I'm doing Helium Comedy Club Philly on March 5th to the 7th. Check it out. Boom.